Hey, we got another episode of How Fucked Is That uh, Uranium co Covert Uranium Basin. So, anyhow, um, let's just get over my funky special effects here and um, live long and prosper. Which is really, really going to start with knowing. Of course, I'm addressing this in particular to the local residents north of Oliver. Six kilometers north of Oliver, B.C. That um, happened to drink out of the covert uranium basin. We'll just go there and then we'll, we'll, we'll try and put on an internet show here doing a little improvising. Mainly we're dealing with triuranium octioxide, which is U3 oxygenate. Uranium-3 oxygenate, and well, it looks like I accidentally closed down some of my stuff, so, so much for, um, for this. There we go. <clears throat> oh yeah, there's the map there. Uh, here's the claim, we'll just go over this, the mineral claim that I discovered in late November, uh, from... Columbia Ministry of Energy, which is also takes care of all the mineral claims and land claims, and this one's called Covert Basin Hunter. Uh, as far as I know, no, nobody I know. I'm Clint Hunter. <clears throat> uh, but that's probably uh, one of the people that filed for the mineral claim, which is... Oops, that's the location I'll show you on the map. And that's uh, basically River Road, which is now called Horsetail Road. You guys can uh, I'll put a link under uh, links under more information to all this, so you can go and access it on your own. Just go through this real quick. I did show this on episode one, and I guess this would be episode seven of Covert Uranium Basin. How fucked is that? Okay, let's uh, just go to a map so the local people can uh, see what I'm talking about. Okay, right, here's Highway 97. Oliver is uh, down this way, off, off this is the screen. Oh, I can't even see that. Must have bumped the camera. Oh, get off. There we go. Highway 97. This map doesn't show it, but there's where she goes across the creek, so uh, Seacrest Road would be just uh, right by the bend there where Kurt's Automotive is, and it goes up here. And my bus is right there, all over Dog Base, Bears Bus, and uh, I had the Duck Pond is right in here. Right, so, River Road. Uh, goes like this and then turns into uh, Horsetail Road which used to be River Road. It falls along like that. So that's the duck pond right there which is just a little lower is where the covert basin hunter claim is which is uh, assayed to be 30 tons of uranium oxides primarily uh, from what I can tell and again go to more info below there or show more and there's all kinds of links to all, all the studies that were done in the 
the mid 80s, the mid 1980s. Uh, they were also done for another one that's, uh, I don't know if it kept going with the arrow. There's a purple lake up here. Uh, and then way off map by Penticton, there's another um, in Marion Valley. Uh, so, anyhow, we're just going to take you on to, um, I think Miss Milky the Clown made this one. Where did it go? There we go. Now we'll see what the old marine has to say. That's fun. Keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys. And it's, it's really bad. Well, uranium-238 is one of many isotopes of uranium. There are only three natural ones, and uh, they occur throughout the universe like fairy dust. And uranium is made in very energetic and violent star processes where other atoms are smashed together in a kind of a snowball. And there is tremendous amounts of energy in the nucleus. Um, uranium dispersed throughout the Earth has been decaying uh, for the four and a half billion years that the Earth has been here. And these tiny amounts of energy, basically heat, have melted parts of the interior of the Earth and made it possible to have a magnetic field. It's also responsible for volcanoes erupting and for the continents moving around on the surface of the Earth, which is called plate tectonics. Um, uranium, which is uh, natural radiation, the, the isotopes that occur in nature, and um, the background natural uh, radiation is, uh, we have to say, natural background levels are pre-1905, because since then, man has been introducing man-made radiation and extra amounts of radiation into our environment. Well, Hanford has 200 square miles of contaminated groundwater uh, below the site there, and that is spreading over time because the contaminants in the soil are leaking at a constant rate into the, uh, you know, into the... Yeah, well, that's that's just Hanford, Washington is just, just, um, just south of us a little ways. Not, not too far. So that gives you a little bit. We're going to go back over some of this. And that is spreading over time. Because that was um, Dr. Helen Heldicott. You may have uh, seen some of her work. She's in my playlists, too. Because the contaminants in the soil are leaking at a constant rate into the, uh, you know, into the groundwater. Keep in mind, Hanford's on the Columbia River. All kinds of dams, and that's wartime plutonium. One of those dams breaks, which revel stokes the most likely in an earthquake. There's the big downy slide, it'll break loose. Uh, they did underpin it, but <clears throat> when it does, it'll make uh, such a wave, it'll take out the revel stoke dam and everything downriver, which is, oh, I don't know, seven, seven more big dams. And then wash out Hanford, leaky old Hanford, and nuclear reservoir and uh, well, production facility is what it was. With breeder reactors. And uh, it'll wash it right out through Washington and Oregon and taking out all the dams as it goes. And then it'll make a huge surge way out into the Pacific. It'll first cover the entire, well, wherever the currents go, and then it'll spread everywhere, just like it did from Japan. The entire West Coast, North and South America will die in short order. Well, it already is, let's face it. 
oil are leaking at a constant rate into the, uh, you know, into the groundwater. I know this sounds incredible to people, but there are 40 miles of unlined trenches at Hanford. You stretch them end to end, into which our federal government, your government, was dumping radioactive waste from nuclear weapons production and its own reactors until the year 2004 when we put those pictures um, on air and in our campaign literature for Initiative 297. Um, it's been against the law for decades for a municipal government to dump un in municipal garbage in unlined landfills, but our federal government thinks it's okay for radioactive waste, even though it seeps right out of those trenches, and, and that stuff is all moving through the soil to the Columbia River. They're, what they're not telling the public is that they also deliberately dumped out of the high-level nuclear waste tanks in the 1950s and 1960s billions of gallons of liquids into the soil. And it is very, very toxic. It is radioactive. It includes uranium that with half-lives of hundreds of thousands of years and plutonium and technetium-90 and strontium-90, technetium-99, excuse me, and all sorts of chemicals as well. And um, it's a witch's brew of deadly wastes, and it's all moving towards our lifeblood, the Columbia River. Uh, this is probably the most dangerous stuff on the planet ever. Uh, very, very small quantities of this waste. Um, and it's been said that a Dixie cup full of this waste in a crowded restaurant, everyone would be dead in the restaurant inside of an hour. If, even the amount that would fit on the leg of a fruit fly uh, is considered a problem dose. And that's happened at Hanford. Fruit flies have landed on contaminated materials and then flown off to go to the lunchroom and deposit contamination on food and on tables and whatnot. And they've had to evacuate a 20-acre area at the Hanford site because of uh, hot fruit flies and wasps. So this, this waste in these tanks is very dangerous in small quantities. And it has another feature, which is it's dangerous for very, very long periods of time. Bush administration obviously has a war or two to pay for. They're cheaping out on protecting public health and safety at the Hanford site. At this point, intend to empty one tank per year. But do the math, 170 tanks left to go to empty out. Over 100 years to empty out the, the tanks at Hanford. I mean, no way will those tanks last that long. I mean, one small earthquake out there could spell disaster for this region. I think you said the Hanford was getting for cleanup two billion dollars a year. Yes, and I think that's what we spend per day on the war in Iraq. I yeah, that's that's about right. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, we like to say that they spend that by breakfast in Iraq. Though it's unlikely anyone will ever set off a nuclear device on top of the school. That's what they prepared for today. Together with the Seattle Police Department, the State Patrol, and the Health Department, the National Guard got ready to deal with a weapon of mass destruction. It's a simulated exercise that we had an explosion. Well, here's just a little bit. As you can see, uh, uranium-238, which is, you know, oxide so <clears throat> is what we're dealing with here in a covert uranium basin and it's it's generally under one percent of uh or it's, it's generally 99 percent of uh of what you'll find in natural occurrences uh, there's a little bit of what uh, the government has to say we're uh, covert basin here, this one. And again, all the links are in the uh, show more. Contaminated with plutonium, neptunium, and americium. You fire one of these rounds, 40% breaks up into dust and oxides and be inhaled, ingested, and absorbed, contaminated air, water, and soil. The United States Army and Bible Posse Institute, which was co-located here, confirmed that in their 1995 report. They stated, quote, there is no way to reduce the toxicity of uranium munitions. And they ignore it and continue today. First of all, I'd like to mention that DU, depleted uranium, had a prior name.
Well, not entirely off topic. <clears throat> There's just a little bit of a write up about how common the uranites are, all the uranium uh, ore forms, being the 51st element in uh, order of abundance in the Earth's crust. Which is, you know, like 0.01%. Well, it's four parts per million our uranium. Which is about 40 times as much silver as they figure. And that's just in the crust, right? Down below is a whole different story. Because it is mainly uranium or anthurium below the crust that keep the place, keep the engine warm. Big nuclear reactor down there. Which gets blanketed in the neutrons and, and higher energy cosmic particles, and that helps start up reaction and makes for an expanding Earth if you get enough of a change in the amount of heating you're getting, cosmic heating. So the assay, the more in-depth assay report, which I haven't got on the screen here, but it's under uh, show more information, there's, there's links to it there, giving the uh, long version of the explanation of our local occurrence here, right? six kilometers north of Oliver. There's like 18 major occurrences just in this one area. Um, in, in the uh, Okanagan and in the valleys leading off of the Okanagan on both sides. <clears throat> so it's kind of, um, you know, as um, far as Canadian climates goes and BC mountains and everything, well, paradise that is the entire Okanagan has a uh, <clears throat> has a serious cost to your your chances of uh, doing a long time down here being born it'll affect your genetic integrity which to me that's that's what your soul is your genetic integrity yeah I told you all jokes about stealing souls by stealing patents just like Monsanto does with the plant patents everything they think they can get their hands on just mutate it a little and then you can say, see, I invented that. And, um, try uranium off the oxide, what we're dealing with mainly, apparently, possibly, we don't, this is all, nothing's for sure. In the covert basin is, is um, fairly insoluble in water, uh, mainly where it Drinking it in water where it collects is, is uh, worst is in the kidney. And it mainly emits alpha radiation, which doesn't penetrate very far. But uh, if it's right next to whatever tissue it's next to, well, it's radiating all this alpha radiation. Uh, you know, that it, it'll screw the DNA up. It'll kill cells, which can let uh, infection in and breaking DNA and that's where you get tumors, the cells that, the few that broken DNA cells that manage to replicate and now there's your genetic defect, your tumor cells that grow into a mass and kill you and allow all kinds of other problems because you've got dysfunctional tissue disrupting whatever that tissue was meant to do. Um, again, uh, Simple thing you can do if you've been drinking some of this water, you know, if you're feeling fine and you're not going to a doctor, I mean, they can do a few things to get it out a little quicker, but it does pass. And we're only talking drunk, we're not talking dust, you know, like from broke up plants. Although this area here in Covert Basin, the assay report never put anything closer to the surface than seven meters. Now how factual that is and how favorable for writing a report you want. 
uh, it is, you know, based on a few samples, holes, <clears throat> is anybody's guess. So take it with a grain of salt, but that would basically indicate, okay, so there's been plants with deep enough roots to go down a meter or so and pull all that up and then, you know, disperse it basically everywhere over thousands of years in the form of the plants that brought it up. So nowadays not much is being brought up to the surface because it's all below the root level. And the trees will bring up some. And in fact if I try really hard I can find increased uh, levels on average below trees you know in the debris pile the leaves, the dead leaves from years past Probably if you took that in and did reduction in photospectrost, could be you would probably you know get a clear picture of that. Well, yeah, there's your trituranium oxyoxides and whatever other form where it forms around the lo local minerals and manages to make it up the uh, rootstocks. Definitely not an area where you want to be growing um, root crops, I would think really proper survey samples should be done with samples of anything that's been grown here just to calibrate it and then you know you know whether you've been growing wheat or or apples or whatever costs a little money but then you know and everything's accumulative so the more you take in the more you have to get out, the more problems you can have, and the more your chances of getting tumor before you die of old age. Just like buying more lottery tickets. Well, you know, sort of. But again, the links will be for all this stuff. This weekly leaks has lots, the internet has lots of shit. But I guess it, if you don't know anything at all, I guess it's pretty hard reading. If I ever have time, I'll definitely write up more, but that's the basics. This just talks about taking citric acid, which uh, lemon juice is, is a good source. Um, so is all the oranges, so not, not, not quite as good, but there, here, yeah, oh yeah, they had, there. This is a list of the citrics that have citric acid, citric fruits, like lemon, grapefruit, and there's the higher the number, the more they have. Grapefruit juice is good if you can dig that. I can't do grapefruit myself. In fact, I hate lemons, but <clears throat> suddenly I love lemons now. <laughs> Just squeeze it in some fresh demineralized water. And uh, that I know is fixed bear right up. He was getting on his last lake again. So yeah, it does it does um, clean out uh, lemon juice and water and cleans out your if you have kidney stones or anything too. I guess uh, if you've been eating high calcified water. And Anyhow, that's that's what they're saying. Yeah. Of course, a lot of what they say is, you know, like in military manuals and stuff, that's just like a placebo. You know, they're not going to say, well, hey, don't worry about it, you're going to be dead in a few days anyhow. <laughs> well, you give them a sugar pill and, you know. Send them back out to perform their function and mine is to prevent loss of life uh, yeah well you know but there is some science there if it's attaching uh, in the ducts of the uh, of the kidney it's probably attaching to calcium and well lemon juice breaks that up so <clears throat> have a few lemonades and 
don't be drinking or cooking with contaminated water. Ideally, you know, you shouldn't be using it, but here we are, and you can't afford to filter it down with reverse osmosis to, like, huge quantities to water your crops and shit, but... You can go to, like, drip irrigation and only, you know, no, no root crops, nothing grown below ground. There's probably studies, and I'm going to find time to look, and who knows, maybe some, some of the agricultural scientists that are on the government, though, will throw in what they know. I'm sure they all have lots of studies, or access to studies. And there's lots on the internet people can research, and, well, let's, let's build up a thingy. Because we're not alone. I mean, there's lots of people in, throughout the Okanagan Valley, and it's a tributary... Uh, valleys that have this problem and lots of people in other parts of the world too now here in BC you know you can't dig it up or nothing and mine it so because it's always proven to me just spread it and spread it and spread it you'll never outlive it half life as long as the earth has been coagulated <laughs> for a half billion year half lights for U-238. Fortunately, it only admits alpha, and as long as you keep it out of you, it's, you know, not as deadly. Well, I don't know if that was any help or not, but... Just, um, gonna like this so much. I'm really uh, having a tough time myself just trying to bring my health back. And then, you know, something new happens, and I've been nuked. What can I say? Don't you be nuked. That's what I'm saying.